Hello, I'm Superintendent Kurt Browning. It's important to me that you hear about what is going on in this district from me. So from time to time, I'll be sharing information with you through podcasts and other mediums. Today, I want to talk about some steps we're planning to take to support our focus on student achievement. The current organizational structure has not produced the kind of results that we want for our students. Over the years, we've increasingly taken teachers out of the classroom to perform other duties. My goal is to get back to where our instructional positions directly impact student achievement. I know what I'm about to share with you may cause some distress for some staff members, but please rest assured that the district will do everything we can to find positions for those staff members impacted by the reorganization efforts that I am about to discuss with you. We've already shared with the staffs at Quail Hollow, Shady Hills, Watergrass, and Wesley Chapel Elementary Schools, and Cruz Lake Middle School, our proposal that affects them. To let everyone else know, we are going to totally renovate Quail Hollow and Shady Hills Elementary Schools starting next school year. While that takes place, we plan to send Quail Hollow students to Watergrass and Wesley Chapel Elementary Schools. Shady Hills students will go to Cruz Lake, which will become a K-8 school. I anticipate that most of the instructional staff members at Quell Hollow and Shady Hills Elementary Schools will have the opportunity to move with their students next year. We do not anticipate having positions for all school-related personnel or administrators from Quell Hollow and Shady Hills at their receiving schools. The layoff recall process will be used to find positions for the SRP employees. The district also will be assisting impacted administrators and non-instructional, non-bargaining employees in finding new positions. In addition, we are reviewing the programs currently housed at Moore Mickens Education Center. I hope to be able to share with you more details about this proposal in the near future. Now I'm going to give you some information related to reductions and allocation of instructional staff who currently are performing non-classroom duties. I know this is going to be hard for some of you to hear and you will have more questions than I can answer in this podcast, but I think it's better for me just to lay it all on the table. First, we are proposing the reduction of media specialist and K-12 literacy coach positions district-wide. We plan to have one full-time school media technology assistant at each school to manage the media centers moving forward. Media specialists and K-12 literacy coaches almost all are certified teachers. We need highly qualified teachers in our classrooms teaching kids. In addition, the district will be using the 2013-14 school year to evaluate the way that technology specialists are providing services to their respective schools recommendations on how to best provide technology services to schools moving forward will likely be developed before the start of the 2014-15 school year. Most of you have heard that we are going to consolidate student services and ESE and reduce the number of staff members in those areas. In a related move, we are proposing consolidation of compliance positions. That means we will have fewer ESOL resource and ESE staffing and compliance positions and that there will be changes in the way the remaining compliance teachers deliver services to schools. This also means that there may be some administrative and non-instructional positions that will be eliminated. Again, the district will do everything we can to find a position for staff members impacted by these changes. We also are planning to consolidate the instructional media and technology department into other existing district departments. In addition, the Office for Teaching and Learning is reviewing its organizational structure and a reallocation of positions within that department is possible. Other administrative reductions will take place including a decrease in the number of adult education positions. There also will be some administrative moves among schools and of course we will have the normal shift in instructional allocations and educational programs that the district experiences at the end of each year to get ready for the upcoming year. I cannot emphasize enough that my goal is to direct all of our attention to doing what is best for the students. Unfortunately, that means that some adults will not be pleased with me. However, if we all are in this for the kids, we all must put aside our natural tendencies to resist change. I ask you to keep an open mind and don't be afraid to tell me you disagree with my proposals. If you have other ideas or suggestions that you think will work better, please send me an email. 
I would be remiss if I didn't include the fact that there are cost savings associated with these proposals. It's no secret that we have a shortfall that we have to address. My hope is to cover that shortfall and to eventually be able to offer all of you raises. You'll be receiving more details about our reduction and consolidation plans. Impacted staff members will also be offered the opportunity to attend one of several regional meetings where resources and information regarding the district's processes for transferring employees will be shared. In the meantime, please remember that my goal is to help this district achieve world-class status. We have great staff members with amazing talents, and we want to utilize those talents to create a community that works together so all Pasco County students will reach their highest potential. Thank you.